woke up Saturday morning and heard the news of Sophie's passing, I didn't know how to process it. Being someone who's followed the electronic music scene religiously for the past decade or so, it was already difficult coming to terms with Io's sudden death back in November. But Sophie's death affected me on a profoundly deep level, not just because of her trailblazing and wholly original sounds, but because she was arguably the person I looked up to most during the beginning stages of my transition. Before we get into that, though, I want to do a little retrospect on who Sophie was and why she was such a force in both electronic music and the trans community to pay respect to someone who had a tremendous impact on the visibility of people like myself. Let's go back to 2013 when Sophie first burst onto the scene with singles like Nothing More To Say, Bip, and L. At this point, very little was known about the reclusive producer due to appearing in interviews with a masked face, altered voice, or fully shrouded body. No one really knew who Sophie was, but listeners and music publications alike were struck by the initial singles that were on one hand rooted in the traditions of PC music and genre alumni like A.G. Cook, but that's about where the similarities end. Take Lemonade from the producer's debut LP product, for example. The song kicks off with what sounds like a digitized liquid being poured into your ears before a bouncing rubbery beat kicks in with what sounds like bubbles popping. It's glossy, catchy as all hell, and slightly off kilter, and... Then you're hit with this massive blast of pure bubblegum pop that's like sugar being injected straight into your veins as pitch shifted vocals sing about the glories of lemonade. Lemonade, la, la, lemonade. It's both an observation of consumer culture with how plastic and artificial everything sounds, while also feeling off kilter and wildly unpredictable. If you took the sensory overload of Blank Masses music and channeled it through the blinding neon glow of hyperpop with an even more experimental edge, this might be what you'd end up with. Songs like Hard remind me of the manic intensity of artists like Machine Girl, where the onslaught of sound is just <laughs> relentless. But I love the boldness and clear willingness to embrace sounds that are both sweet and dripping in acid that glows in the dark. Speaking of the plastic sheen that coats the instrumentals, Sophie crafted all of these sounds by hand without the use of any samples, becoming a true sound architect and creating a world of latex, balloons, bubbles, metal, plastic, and elastic, as mentioned in interviews with billboards and the fader. Missum 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 sounds like a shop full of metallic objects that have all come to life and begun to clang, smash, and scrape against each other, and the pure physicality of it hits hard. The New York Times describes Sophie's sound beautifully as giddy fun, but also an invitation to consider Pop's pleasures, structures, and gender expectations, and Pop's commercial status as both a consumer item and an emotional catalyst. So at this point, Sophie had already made a tremendous impact on the music scene with songs that turned heads, opened eyes, and seemed to open the door to all kinds of new possibilities for the genre's future. Then in 2017, two years after the release of Product, Sophie decided to step forward by releasing a music video for a song called It's Okay to Cry, in which the world for the first time ever saw her true face and afterwards revealed that she was a trans woman. In an interview with The Muse, she mentioned feeling boxed in by labels and describing music as a chosen method of communication and self-expression. And it was mentioned later by representatives that Sophie preferred not to use gender pronouns when referring to herself. Couple all of this with the video for It's Okay to Cry, featuring Sophie nude from the bus stop, dancing and radiating so, so much joy that you'd actually have to be dead inside to not feel at least a little spark of something while watching. And it was increasingly clear that this was a musician who was a true trailblazer, not just with the fiercely forward-thinking and hyper-aware electro PC pop she was creating, but also in her presentation and embrace of the beauty 
of the trans body. Musicians like Kim Petras and Dorian Electra were already known for their queer as hell energy and were widely loved by those in the LGBTQ community. But Sophie took it to another level of boldness and continued to do so as she began to work with big name artists like Madonna, Nicki Minaj, Vince Staples, the aforementioned Kim Petras, and Charlie XCX. Her willingness to be fully and unashamedly herself in an industry that still struggles with being welcoming towards people like myself was a much needed jolt to the music scene. And you know that within months of It's Okay to Cry hitting the web, Sophie amassed a passionate following of people who weren't just ardent fans of her music, but were inspired by her presentation to feel more comfortable in their own identities and bodies. Being able to leave a mark like that on why swaths of the community is something truly special that can never ever be erased. So it's remarkable to me that her second album, 2018's Oil of Every Pearl's Uninsides, makes even bigger strides in her already unique sound and incorporates a warmth and genuine humanity that vastly widens the spectrum of color, emotion, and musical influence of an already vibrant palette and somehow manages the impossible, being both scatterbrained stylistically while still maintaining a cohesiveness and singular vision that only Sophie could deliver. Opening track, It's Okay to Cry, is moving, sweet on the ears and heart, and addresses how damaging the stereotypes pushed on people of every gender are. When she sings, I can see the truth through all the lies, and even after all this time, just know you've got nothing to hide. It's okay to cry. Is a beautiful reassurance that showing emotion and being vulnerable is a sign of strength, not weakness, and an integral part of the human experience. We should all feel comfortable expressing ourselves in whatever way comes naturally, as Sophie has demonstrated time and time again. But second track Pony Boy pulls a full 180 and sends us straight into pure shock and awe with an abrasive instrumental that hits like a slab of steel, like the song itself is dominating you into submission. And the song itself is very openly about whipping someone into shape, with lyrics like, lock up the door, put the pony on all fours, crack down the whip, make the pony bite the bit, spit on my face, put the pony in his place, I am your toy, just a little pony boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan. Face Shopping continues the oral assault with a screeching, bludgeoning instrumental that sounds like tracks from products, but on steroids. As Sophie comments on the ways in which social media has caused us to brand and commodify ourselves with lyrics like, my shop is the face I front, I'm real when I shop my face. The critique on consumer culture becomes laser focused. The music video, which is an experience and a half, features Sophie's increasingly warped and distorted face, as well as flashes of well-known brands like Coca-Cola, and it's a brilliant expression of how we become more plastic and artificial the more we try to present a facade to the world that isn't genuine to who we actually are. Is It Cold in the Water features one of my favorite vocal performances in recent memory, as guest vocalist Cecile Bleep soars higher and higher over simmering oceans of scents that reach a nearly transcendent climax, before infatuation brings us back down to earth with warm, gently rumbling scents, discordant vocals echoing all throughout the backgrounds, and a desperation for infatuation that comes through in the screeching scents near the end, and Cecile repeating, I want to know. I want to know. Then we get to Pretending, which is an ambient track placed smack dab in the middle of a hyperkinetic pop album. If it weren't for infatuation reining things in a bit, the transition would have been even more jarring, but somehow its inclusion doesn't make the album drag. The groaning sounds coming through the dense wall of droning keyboards reminds me a bit of Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross's Juno, or even ambient artists like Yellow Swans, Raphael Anton Irisari, or Lust Mord. The one-two punch of the very 80s-esque immaterial, which sounds like a fusion of Madonna, J-pop, and Aqua, and Whole New World, which acts as a summation of the adventurous sounds presented all throughout the album, brings it all to a satisfying conclusion and proves that no matter what sound Sophie takes a stab at, she has a knack for 
expertly pulling it off and making it wholly her own. Her music was something that could truly only come from her, and Ensign will likely realize how tremendous of an impact she had on the direction of both electronic and pop music, with artists like Charlie XCX, 100 Gex, Rina Sawayama, and more already laying the foundations for the future of hyperpop, Sophie blazed a trail forward that many, many artists will no doubt continue to be influenced by in the coming years. This is one reason why her death came as an absolute shock to millions across the world. When I first heard the news, I was waiting at a train stop and broke down into a sobbing mess because Sophie wasn't just one of my favorite musicians, but she was also the person I looked up to the most during the earliest stages of my transition. She helped me find the bravery to not just embrace my identity and be brave in the journey of forging myself, but also showed me the beauty of my emotions, my femininity, my being, and how beautiful it is to present your whole self to the world. This guiding life Light that had been a comforting presence through a difficult and uncertain stage of my life had been yanked from my sky and I felt broken, confused, unable to accept the fact that she's gone. We'd never met, but the impact that she had on me as a person could never be understated. When we already have so few role models to look up to, and I did look up to her, every death hits that much harder. And even now, it hurts in ways I don't know if I could ever express that we won't see her continue to flourish in her own journey and as a musician. We've lost a true icon and visionary whose impact on both the trans community and culture will continue to reverberate for years and years. She's a part of every one of us now, and I just hope we can carry her spirit forward and collectively be as bold, beautiful, and fearless as she was every single day. If there's anything I could say directly to her, it would be this. Thank you for everything. You helped me feel a little less alone during a period in my life when I didn't have any trans friends or mentors and felt as if I were facing this mountain by myself with no one to guide me. Then you appeared colorful, playful, and so holy yourself that it almost knocked me to my feet. I had never seen a trans person who was so, so confident in their own skin, and it forever changed how I saw myself. At one point, I remember thinking, if I could be even half as confident as she is and find that kind of beauty in myself, I'd be the happiest girl in the world. And now a few years later, I'm well on my way, and you are someone I knew I could always turn to for a jolt of good energy and a reminder that as long as I give myself love and never be afraid to be a badass, I could grow into the woman I so, so so badly wanted to be. It doesn't feel real that you're no longer with us and probably won't for a while, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being you. Thank you for being inspiration to thousands upon thousands of people like myself and for giving a metaphorical middle finger to those who would seek to tear us down rather than letting us live in peace. We will forever hold you close to our hearts, and treasure you and what you did for our community. Rest in peace, queen. I hope the moon is beautiful where you are. And um, for the rest of us, I know we're all hurting deeply right now, but don't ever forget, it's okay to cry.